Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, my name is Anna and today we'll be doing my January wrap up. Let's get going. <coughs> my voice just cracked. <laughs> so my first book was debuted by Herman Heasy. So this book was narrating the life of Daniela Sinclair from childhood to adulthood. It follows his thoughts during the stages of growing up. Though every chapter he basically introduces you to a new character that had an impact on his development. I gave this a 3.5 stars, um, I don't think it was that bad, but it wasn't really ma- it wasn't really magical and it was too vague. I do not know why my voice keeps cracking, I'm so sorry. There was a lot about like the mark of Cain, but it never was elaborated as to what it meant. I think the message could have been clearer, but I think it was something along like to be yourself kind of message. There wasn't much plot and I, I was kind of bored about halfway of the book and I couldn't really connect with anyone of the characters. I think some of the relationships we had was because of Sinclair falling in love with Damien's mom. And like the age is like a really big difference. So I would also sometimes get lost when a character, you know, gets into the horse, um, philosophical theories and all that so I would just lose my thoughts and I'll be like okay where is this going so yeah sometimes I would have to go back and reread the thoughts just because it would just keep on dragging on and on but otherwise it was okay it was an interesting read so but yeah and my next book is 1984 by Haruki Murakami the year is 1984 and the city is Tokyo. A young woman named Aoma Mei follows a taxi driver's ending in a commanding suggestion and begins to notice puzzling discrepancies in the world around her. She has entered, she realizes a parallel existence where she calls 1Q84. Q is for question mark. A world that bears a question. Meanwhile, an aspiring writer named Tango takes on a suspect ghost writing project. He may get so wrapped up with the work and its unusual author that soon his previously perplexing life begins to come unraveled. So, I actually did not finish at 342 pages and I gave it a 2 stars. It was so boring. I really like Tango's storyline and how it's coming, but that's about it. So I was kind of tired of our mommy repeating how small her breasts are. I mean, get it? It's small. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, and like how she had the orgasms and that would throughout the book. The author kept like overly explaining and everything and it wasn't really necessary. Like all the details that the author had put in really wasn't necessary, which is dragging on and on and on and on so it just wasn't really necessary to explain everything and there was too much repetitiveness and plot and the plot was thin and the book was really slow it was really slow so kind of yeah as I said I kind of liked Tango storyline although it wasn't that great but it was wasn't really boring it was enough to keep me interested but for the Enki, um, she didn't really provide, she didn't really provide a large character despite trying to be mysterious, but it didn't really work out that well. But I did want it more about the little people that kept being repeated, but that really didn't, um, you know, explain who they were because I never finished the book, but, yeah, but I'm not sure if they were ever mentioned again, so. I just didn't like this book at all. And my next book is The Scholar Alchemist by Kylie Lee Baker. Scylla dreams of becoming a moral alchemist, of providing for her family by making alchemical gold and gems for the wealthy, to eat in order to stay young forever. But for now, she trapped in her impoverished village in southern China, practicing a legal form of alchemy to keep food on the table, rescuing the dead for a price. It's been a while since I really loved the book, and this was it. I gave it a 4 stars. I love it so much. This is really, really enjoyable. I really loved the writing as they were vivid, and I loved the storytelling as well. I thought the plot and the world building was pretty cool. I really liked the world building. I thought it was really unique. I really enjoyed the magic system, which was also cool, de you know, dealing with alchemy and like all the stones, transformations, so I thought that was really, really nice. 
And I also enjoyed seeing the alchemy and from view of the Tang Dynasty and the drama surrounding the royal family because one has a lot of drama. I also think the side characters would have been able to be more developed and I thought it was a cool concept as how Zolan was able to rescue dead people and the ending was really interesting. But I think in fits considering what has happened, I really think um, it was interesting but somehow it was suitable. But it was, I love this so much so I really really enjoy this book. And my next book is Curious Tides by Pascal Lasso. So this is like nine powers that means a deadly education who is following a teen mage who must unravel the truth behind the secret society that may have been involved in her classmate's death. So again, this was another really nice book. I gave it a 4.5 stars. I loved this book. It was amazing. Although there were some things that could have been better, but it was really, really nice. I really enjoyed it. It was a fun read. I liked the mystery behind it, and liked, I really liked the world building. I thought it was really nice explained, and it was just well established. The author did a good job of explaining the world, and I just loved settings of the book. It was dark and creepy, and I love it. Reading about the tie color was fascinating and I liked the writing as well. It was just so beautifully done. It was I also liked how the character were well written, even though I didn't really like Emily, I thought what she did was selfish. It did have a purpose, but I still thought it was selfish and couldn't have been done in another way, but the author wanted to go in that direction. I did feel like the pacing was a bit slow. I didn't think the love triangle was needed since the romance was a little bit confusing and what and actually wasn't really necessary for the romance to begin with. Also, I thought it was kind of odd that the students had access to Dovermere, especially because in Dovermere that's where students and drown and end up dead, being washed on the shore. So I'm surprised there's like no magical barrier around Dovermere, especially what is happening with the students, so that was kind of weird. They could then just go in and out, and that's it. Um, I thought the ending was okay. Uh, it did leave off at a cliffhanger, but I think the epilogue could have been fleshed out more. Uh, it didn't really add much, but I think it could have been a little bit done better. It was just a bloop, so it didn't really offer much at all. However, the final battle kind of reminded me of Kingdom Hearts. It's a video game franchise that I love so much. So it reminded me of Kingdom Hearts with all the Umbre. I think that's what it's called. Since like, you know, because the Umbre's in Curious Tides, it reminds me of nobodies that Sora has to fight in Kingdom Hearts. So I thought that was like really nice touch. Even though it probably was intentional, I don't know if the author knows Kingdom Hearts. It just reminded me of the game franchise. I love that franchise so much. So my final one is Burn Our Bodies Done by Molly Power. So following a girl whose past has always been a mystery until she decides to return to her mother's hometown. The history has a tendency to repeat itself. And I gave it a 3.5 stars. This was a re this was a weird book. It really was. If I thought the inheritance of Ocarina and Dominion was a weird one, this is even weirder, so I don't know what that's up with me in reading weird books, but here we are. So, and I'm not sure I have to feel about this book, to be honest. I don't think the logic behind it made sense, and I think the writing felt a bit too descriptive. There was a lot of family drama, which became too repetitive. I thought the ending was cool, um, and it, it kind of like came in full circle, so I thought it was like really nice. But I thought the pacing was a bit too slow since it took forever to get to to the ending. It really did took forever and I don't think it was necessary to bring it that way. It could have been just straight to the point in all honesty. I didn't really feel any connection to the characters but the sequence behind Margaret's family was disturbing. It really was. But I think the book is still worth the read, even though it was slow, but I really do think the book was worth the read. So that was that is actually my last book. I actually have read a few audiobooks, but I'm holding it off because I'm doing a challenge with those audiobooks, so that will be 
whenever that video will come out, I don't know. But yeah, and so those are all the books I've read in January. Let me know what you have read in January, and please like, subscribe, and comment so you'll be notified every time I post. And I will see you in the next one. Bye!